Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Paul McGlone, CEO of Seeing Machines. Uh, we're focused on the transport sector. We develop driver and occupant monitoring systems. We're the world's leader with high performing technology. We operate in three specific niches, new passenger vehicles, aircraft, and aftermarket. New passenger vehicles, of course, has been driven largely by legislation in Europe with Euro NCAP and the European Commission. And that legislation is really finding its way throughout the world. So there's a strong regulatory push for the take-up of this technology. In other parts of the world where the regulations aren't as solid yet, they will catch up. Uh, the driver of our technology there is levels of autonomous driving. So if you want levels of autonomy, you need to be able to observe the driver. So this is a very, very strong position for us to be in. On the uh, aviation side of the business, uh, we operate in a few different areas using the same core platform technology. Uh, aircraft, fixed and rotary. We operate in uh, pilot training simulators, which is essentially an exact duplication of the cockpit of an aircraft and air traffic control environments. So this is the smallest part of our business, but something that we still think is very, very prospective. And we also lead in this area. We're the only player in this space that has uh, been able to achieve our technology in an aircraft. Our aftermarket business, of course, is where we started. Uh, and, and in this uh, segment, we deploy our technology after the vehicle uh, is on the road to heavy vehicle fleets, mining equipment, uh, trains, trams, and buses. And we do that on a worldwide basis. We have a very strong purpose in seeing machines. Our mission, zero transport fatalities, and our purpose to get everyone home safely. This permeates everything that we do. And it's very, very important. If you look at the facts, uh, the majority of crashes involve some level of distraction. Uh, drowsiness increases uh, accidents by four to six times. So it's a very, very big number. Uh, in our business, our technology has traveled more than 10 billion kilometers and we've detected over 12 million distraction events since we've started and about a quarter of a million a year. So from an investment point of view, uh, you know, what matters? What matters here? Well, each of the three verticals that we've talked about uh, in transport are very, very large addressable markets. That's the first point. Also, we're at this very important inflection point for driver monitoring systems and occupant monitoring systems where regulators are demanding by 24 and 25 that the majority of cars in Europe at least have these systems implemented and, and we see this as uh, increasing and becoming more prevalent around the world. So that's really important. We do have first mover advantage. Uh, we're in a, a lot of OEMs, we have a, a lot of cars and in increasing numbers hitting the road as we speak. Uh, our aftermarket business where we started, we have about 40,000 trucks connected at the moment. As I say, we've, we've, we've traveled more than 10 billion kilometers, so our technology is very, very well tried and tested. It is a, a very sophisticated technology. It combines, obviously, artificial intelligence, machine learning, sophisticated optical path, uh, acceleration of, of our software on silicon platforms, and we put all of this together in what we call our systems approach which is our unique selling proposition uh, to OEMs and Tier 1s. Today, uh, we, we are in 10 OEMs, car manufacturers. We have 30 models hitting the road uh, uh, this year, and we'll see that number increase. I mean, we've doubled the size of our pipeline, our booked business pipeline in the last 12 months, and we see that growth rate uh, continuing over the next 12 to 24 months as well. Our aftermarket business, growing at strong double digits, circa 40% per annum. Uh, it's, it's underpinned by three to five year contracts that deliver us uh, monthly services revenue. And these contracts are very sticky. In fact, our churn rate is less than 2%, which, which would possibly be uh, the best churn rate in the telematics market uh, worldwide. So we're, we're really pleased with that. It's a very strong business and again, regularly regulatory drivers are really pushing this forward. Uh, years ago, we licensed exclusively our technology to Caterpillar and they uh, continue to roll, roll it out in their mining vehicles worldwide. So we're very pleased uh, with that relationship. And as mentioned earlier, in the aviation space, uh, it's just starting to, to pick up now. And our objective in that environment is to license our technology to big systems integrators. Just back to the regulations, and, and I'm, I'll, I'll talk, talk about this in, in really 
uh, two themes, I, I suppose. One is Europe. Uh, those regulations are very well in place. They're formal. The key performance criteria for uh, the driver monitoring systems that link to the five-star NCAP safety rating are published and well known. They increase year on year. Uh, we're now seeing the US uh, move to tighten its regulatory environment. Although in that market, the take-up rate of DMS, which is pretty similar to Europe, is driven by uh, autonomous driving. Hands-off wheel must have a driver monitoring system to ensure a safe environment. So different, different drivers, but a similar take-up rate. And we're also seeing uh, the regulations roll out uh, in uh, all, all uh, markets around the world. So we think there's a very, very strong position for us to be in. In terms of the business, uh, we operate in our automotive uh, segment uh, typically through tier ones, very large companies, quite diversified typically, that, that uh, provide almost all of the componentry within a vehicle. Our strategy is a little different to others. We tend to focus on fewer, deeper, more formal collaborative engagements with tier ones, and this, this is a key contributor to our our win rate and our success over the last year or two. We've talked before about our three pillars. What this really means in, in plain English is we offer software and that software can be deployed in any environment an OEM chooses. Uh, we offer our software embedded in silicon, so we have lots of uh, silicon partnerships. Now this can often speed up and reduce implementation risk for OEMs that already have a sort of a pre-selected silicon provider, and we, op and we also offer our IP to be embedded um, with, uh, directly with OEMs or, or with other partners, uh, which is a highly accelerated, high-performing application of our technology. What this means is that we can cover all of the packaging, camera packaging and processing challenges faced by an OEM, and they, they can find all of those solutions uh, right here at Scene Machines. Our strategy is, is also very focused on delivering the features and requirements of our customers today, but also the features and requirements of the customers tomorrow. We drive a lot of, a lot of that invention, but we also respond to market forces to deliver uh, new features, uh, new technologies, faster processing, etc. So we're in a very strong technical position, we would say. Market share is growing. Uh, we, we have been very successful in leading the market share win rate over the past 12 months, and we, we expect uh, and hope for that to continue. If we take a look at the numbers just for a minute, and there's two lines here that I'll call out in particular, the blue line and the green line. So we have an expectation to achieve around about a 40% market share by 2028, uh, in terms of volume and around about a 50% market share in terms of revenue. So what that means is we have uh, a premium in our average selling price and that premium is derived through the systems approach that we take, the relative high performance of our technology compared to others. So, so big market, circa 100 million new cars a year, moving to very high levels of penetration across the board and our, our current win rate and our expectation is that, that we'll uh, be a leader in both volume and revenue. If we focus on aftermarket for just a moment, uh, you know, in the scheme of things, still relatively small, about 40,000 vehicles or trucks connected. However, the same regulations that are driving uh, the passenger vehicle market are now driving the heavy vehicle market, and in particular in Europe. So we're starting to see new opportunities open up and we call uh, one of those opportunities is after manufacture and, and we're seeing significant demand from uh, truck and bus manufacturers, for example, to install our equipment and our system at the point of manufacture. This is a new market opportunity for us. There's another new market opportunity uh, which we thought in the early days quite small and niche. This is where de we deploy our technology into the major developers of autonomous vehicle platforms. We call it the backup driver monitoring system. Originally we thought the, the addressable market was seven or eight thousand units 
And today, given the explosion of these companies around the world, we believe it's in uh, the high tens of thousands of units. So we're very focused on that space as well. And that all complements the underlying growth rate of our traditional aftermarket business, where we sell equipment into a vehicle and we provide a service for which we get paid a monthly service fee. So we're um, very pleased with the progress of aftermarket and very bullish uh, on its prospects going forward. So to summarise, uh, today uh, more than 440,000 vehicles using our technology on the road, that's passenger vehicles, and that's increasing um, at around about 100% per annum or more. And we expect that to continue for several years on the back of business that we've already won. In addition to that, uh, our, our pipeline of book business is growing very rapidly. So the, the, the royalty streams that we derive from that business are very important in our business model because of course they're very high margin and those royalty streams have really only started to kick off in this last 12 months and uh, I think for all investors today you'll be able to track our progress and, and see the rapid increase in that particular part of our business uh, month on month, quarter on quarter. So our, our Guardian or aftermarket business is now well positioned. We use a range of distributors around the world and we also uh, are pushing a little more assertively into direct sort of global enterprise customers. This is very important to us. It really changes the margin mix in that service business and, and we're very confident that it will, uh, as the move to license revenue in automotive, change the profile of margin and cash for us over the course of this year and the fo and following years. So back to our aftermarket business, uh, there's an important change occurring there uh, that will affect our, our overall business performance. And it's just as important as the shift to license revenue in new vehicles. And that is we're pursuing uh, new opportunities with global enterprise customers, direct, we're continuing to work with our distributors around the world, but this slight adjustment to our business model, where it makes sense, has a dramatic in, uh, impact on our margin. And if we combine the margin mix change for aftermarket with the margin mix change delivered through our, our uh, license revenues in, in automotive, uh, this, this really uh, will deliver a profoundly different profit and cash performance over the next three to four years. So regulations supporting us around the world, we expect that to continue. I think there's no turning back in the regulatory uh, support uh, for this technology. And then I think finally, uh, in aviation, we'll, we'll continue to pursue uh, the business as we are today, but the ultimate goal being to license, uh, as I mentioned. So we're really pleased with the business performance today. We're making very strong progress in each of the three verticals that, that, we, that we focus on. We believe we have world-leading technology that is above and beyond what's available elsewhere. Uh, we have uh, each of our three businesses showing uh, positive uh, growth and we expect that the deep relationships that we have with our partner ecosystem will enable us to continue to grow and achieve the market share objectives uh, that I mentioned earlier. Now at the back of this uh, presentation you'll see some additional uh, statistics that you might find useful in terms of shareholders and some of the big brands that we deal with and a few comments on, on our uh, competitive position and, and differentiation. I'd really like to thank you for taking the time to listen to the Seeing Machine story. We're very excited by what's ahead. Very sorry I couldn't make it in person but we will uh, be back in the UK uh, very, very soon. Thank you very much.